Hey guys, so I just finished the entire Netflix Resident Evil series, so you didn't have to. Now, you might be wondering why I wanted to watch all of it, and I'll be honest, I didn't think it was that terrible from the onset. Now, some people who have been dropping off after the first two episodes, sure, I'll admit you miss out on something pretty cool in the third episode. But this show really does feel like one of those kind of writing projects you might have had in high school or even maybe in post-secondary where you had to do a story of some sorts or even a paper and you do maybe the first bit really strong, if that decent. And then this, the middle part you're like, okay, but then the ending you have maybe 12 hours to try and put something together so you get a passing grade and that is what this last episode just felt like i just finished it and holy shite this show is awful is it the worst thing that netflix has ever produced no is it the worst thing that's ever come out of the resident evil movie series that's debatable because there's a lot of garbage that has come from the paul ws anderson films but in general is it crap for the most part, yes it is. Now, I haven't really actually seen anyone give a bunch of racist hate about uh, Lance Reddick playing uh, Wesker, and if they are, fuck that, because that's dumb, that's the dumbest reason. I think that he is quite commendable as this character. Is he the Wesker that we're all used to? No, but, <clears throat> well, fuck it, I'm just gonna spoil it. There are multiple versions of him. I know you're not going to watch it, but here, this is where your Wesker Wesker is in this show. <laughs> That's almost the best part of this show, aside from the horror. Now, if I'm going to talk about anything positive of any sort first, first being Lance Reddick, I watched this show purely for him. I really love this actor. He's a fantastic actor. He was great in Fringe. He was fantastic in The Wire. He's great in John Wick. I watched it for him. And for the first half, I would say he is as prominent of a character as you'd want to be to keep you invested in this poop. But eventually he starts to get pushed out by the sisters, particularly the one who plays Jade, both in the current day or the past, I guess you'd say, and then the future, which is the present, which is the end of the world. And the writing for these kids, especially Jade, is god fucking awful. And I'm not surprised because we have the master himself, Andrew Dabb, who ruined the last four seasons of Supernatural. And even his diehard supporters have come out to say that this show is even shit. There is still some who think that he's great and think that he did a good job with the end of Supernatural, and even some who for some reason, you know what, you're entitled to your opinion full-heartedly. But the praise that is given from some people, I don't know where it's coming from. The only thing I can also say that is good about this show is the production value. People who are shitting on the production value, you're idiots. The show actually had a decent budget. The VFX are very well done. The set design, even both in the present, sorry, the past and the future sets are all very well done for a show that was shot in South Africa. Now, admittedly, there's a little bit less budget in terms of shooting out there. So maybe they would have had a little bit more material and more money to put into these sets. But the sets and the production values, VFX, all that stuff, really well done. Even some of the action scenes, there is a one shot for some random reason about halfway through with this fat guy going on a killing spree against a bunch of zombies, or zeros as the show likes to call. No reason for it to be in it, but it's a very well put together sequence. But that's it. This show has some absolutely abysmal writing. Now, we know that with most Resident Evil, or even zombie shows in general, it's kind of a commonplace thing to have characters do dumb fucking things, put themselves into dumb fucking situations, and get people killed because they're fucking morons. This show tries to do that, but at the same time, they also almost reward the character for doing so. Jade, being the main character, at the very end of this uh, season, when she's trying to do some sort of test about trying to make them her or some sort of pheromone invisible to the Zeros, 
She brings a zombie on this tanker ship that has a bunch of other refugees on it without anyone knowing, hides it, straps it in, lets her daughter come into the room with this thing, who then attracts it, somehow breaks these bonds, even though this thing's been in fucking water for God knows how goddamn long, breaks out and kills a pregnant woman. And then her cuck of a boyfriend is like, oh no, it's not your fault. Yeah, you did these awful things, but you know, we, we got bigger things right now. And at the end, he's cucking for her right up until the end. And I can't understand that bit of writing. And it's just as atrocious with her when she's introduced at the beginning. Andrew Dabb showed that he can't write teen angst. He thinks he knows what teen angst is. He thinks he knows what funny teen angst is. And he once again shows that he's a, just a fucking moron. He absolutely destroys this girl's character with her awful writing. She makes some sort of Zootopia porn hub reference or porn reference or some sort of... It's a random joke. I had to pause it because it just comes out of nowhere and it is so cringy. There is a Pornhub joke later on though. And while some people have been ripping that one, I actually kind of like that scene because it's Lance Reddick essentially just destroying this dude who works for Umbrella and he says, I'm going to blacklist you so hard that Pornhub won't even accept you. So I thought that was actually kind of funny just because of the ramifications. But again, the characters don't have any sense to them. There's so many inconsistencies, both with their logic as well as how the show progresses. Characters will appear in places that don't make any sense as to how they got there. Buildings and uh, security ramifications don't exist. At one point, the two kids get into the Umbrella Secrets facility after hours just by holding up a phone that says, I'm Albert Wesker. It's her dad record. It's her dad's voice. And that's it. There's no security guard. There's no nothing. And even when all of the alarms start to go off, nothing happens. This dog is able to come through and totally bite one of the young girls, which if there is one other thing that I can maybe say that is, if it's not a positive, it's at least an idea that I did kind of like to see more of was the ramifications of the T-virus. Andrew does a little bit more about the idea of how it would have become such a viable means of taking over the world. But the end, the outbreak is never revealed. We don't know what happened. We just get a bunch of these references, some of them being a little bit nicely placed, some of them being completely out of left field just for fucking gummy points, which has not worked at all for those who are watching the reviews. Like, sure, this show right now is number one on Netflix for TV shows, but I would love to see the drop-off rate. I think most people are just watching it just to see the first episode, to see how bad it is considering the word of mouth that has happened. The drop-off rate is going to be awful. If this show somehow gets a second season, I don't know, because Netflix used to do that deal of two seasons, but now they've been just killing. They've been dying the last little while with their stock price drop, the idea of putting ads in, the very thing that they swore they would never do, and a lot of these vanity projects and everything just falling through. Netflix is bleeding, so I don't know if they're going to really want to bring this show back. They already did that with Another Life, which was just panned to the fucking tens. So I don't know why you would bring this one back. But I did just like how they were trying to introduce it as a antidepressant and the woman who is the head of uh, Umbrella, who is a really good Corella DeVille, to be honest, if they ever did any kind of other one. I think she'd do a great job of it because she's a fucking menacing bitch in this show, even if her writing's awful. The idea of this obsession with trying to make this drug viable even though hey look it's turning people into fucking monsters yes sure the dosage rate has to be quite high for it to happen but you guys still want to rush this shit even though you know what the stakes are and in the end she comes full circle with it and still kind of doesn't really learn from it even though she takes on maybe a little bit more responsibility than she should in terms of the situation she's created overall the uh, if I could say maybe one other thing, though, that's maybe positive is I did enjoy the monsters. There's a giant fucking caterpillar thingy. The very end, you should skip to the end just to see the giant-ass crocodile. The 
that thing was actually really well done. Um, the, the liquors were really good too. There's a spider that appears in the third episode that was fucking gnarly. Don't explain. They don't explain how the fuck these giant things are around, but they're, they're there. And for those of you guys who have been wanting a true adaptation of the Resident Evil and uh, the, the first two games at least, and you weren't satisfied with either the Paul W.S. Anderson films or the well, recent Welcome to Raccoon City, I have an unfortunate wake-up call for you guys. It's not as good as you remember it being. The story and the ideas are pretty well, you know, cool in concept. But if you were to literally adapt the dialogue it's all fucking corny guys would you want would you want that jill sandwich bullshit they even do a couple of corny ass lines in this show and they still come off as cringe you want the best version that you could get just find the novel the umbrella the umbrella conspiracy that was written by sd perry i think back in the early 2000s her novels are great they aren't accepted by Capcom, but I don't exactly understand why, considering she did probably the best job you're ever going to get in terms of a different form of adaptation of the Resident Evil games. She basically novelized all of them up to Code Veronica, and then she unfortunately never got to do four or whatever. But yeah, that's your best adaptation. You're never going to get a good movie. Let's just face it. And I'm also the one who has the controversial thought that Extinction, the third Paul W. S. Anderson, is the best film all around. Not as a Resident Evil film, for sure, but as a movie-going experience, it technically is the best, in my opinion. So yeah, you're not going to get a good Resident Evil adaptation. You're not going to get a good Netflix show adaptation. Andrew Dabb, once again, proves to us all that this guy is just a fucking hack of a writer. He doesn't have skill. He was given... You know, some a lot of good guidance when he was with Supernatural up until he became a showrunner, and then he showed his true colors. Um, I gave him a little bit of a break, even though I ripped on him all the time. He was in a corner with Supernatural. The show had run on so fucking long, there was no other stories to do except retcon and just do fan service bullshit. This is no excuse. He has... No excuse here. This is some incredibly poorly written characters, some very poorly done storytelling. Even if I didn't mind the actual back and forth between the past with the girls and then the future with the end of the world, that worked for the first half, but then it just fell apart in terms of pacing, especially when you knew they were holding on stuff because there was going to be a twist of some sort. And the twists, let alone, are fucking predictable as well. So yeah, I, I believe pretty much every what everyone else is saying, it's horrible. It's not the worst thing that has ever been produced in terms of Netflix quality and in, not in terms of Resident Evil. I, I never found any of the movies to be particularly good, in my opinion. The final chapter was trash. At least you could see the action in this show and like the final chapter with the, mm, the shaky cam shit. So in the end though, I'll still give this show a one out of seven i can't give it anything higher because i can't bear to think to watch any of this again i give the one point is split between the production value and lance reddick i'm very very sad that this guy was a part of this i had a feeling it wasn't going to be very good but i didn't think it would be this poor i just hope that it doesn't affect his career well Corella Deville lady, yeah, give her more work too, I think. But otherwise, no. Andrew, just just stop this. And if Netflix, if you if you somehow pick this up again, you're only just digging your further your grave even further. And for those critics who have been praising this, I I, I think you're doing it for clickbait. You have to because you know you're going to get an angry reaction out of the Resident Evil fans. If there's anyone who's maybe as as uh, angry and uh, as passionate uh, in certain ways about their fandom, it's the Resident Evil fans. They're on the same level almost with Star Wars fans, in my opinion. But anyways, guys, that's my thought. I just wanted to do this because I'm in the middle of editing another uh, job here, but I just thought I would just give my... 15 minutes of thought about this piece of shit anyways if you've guys seen it let me know what you thought of it did anyone else think the special effects were cool let's just talk about the spider thing if you got to that point otherwise that's all for me guys hope you enjoyed this review if you did leave a like and if you're just more subscribe otherwise see you guys next time